My name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GMAT. We have been solving GMAT math problems out of this book here. GMAT Review, the official guide, the 13th edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The book contains 230 problem solving questions. It has 174 data sufficiency questions. We have already solved for every single math problem from this book. If you are interested in watching any of the original solutions to the problems, you will find the original solutions from day number 1 through 250. Right now, we are in the process of redoing the problems and we are on page number 183. Please turn to it. Page number 183, the penultimate problem on the page, the problem number 218. Problem number 218 tells us that we have a list, a list that consists of 30 decimals. A list that consists of 30 decimals. We are told that one third of those decimals are such that their tenth digit happens to be even. One third of them happens to have an even tenth digit. And, we are, and of course that will also imply that two thirds will have odd tenth digit. We are further told that if the decimal is such that if the tenth digit of the decimal is even, then we have to round it up. For example, for, ex for example, if you happen to find if you happen to find three thousand five hundred and forty-seven point uh, two seven three, three thousand four hundred forty-seven point two seven three. Well, that that uh, that that is a uh, the tenth digit there. The tenth digit of this number is even. Since the tenth digit is even. We are told that we are supposed to round it up, so this will become 3,748. It will become 3,748. Similarly, we are told that if the tenth digit happens to be odd, then we are supposed to round it down. So, for example, if we find like 17.34, 17.34, we'll have to round it down and it will become 17. So, if the tenth digit is odd, we round it down. If the tenth digit is even, we round it up. The question is very simple, very straightforward. What we are supposed to do is that after we have done our rounding, then we have, we have to tell them the difference between the estimated sum of these 30 numbers minus the actual sum of these 30 numbers. And uh, it's, a, it's a 1, 2, 3 problem where they give you three, uh, three, three, three choices and our job is to find the right combination. Tell you what, let's make, it very, let's make this question simple. Let's make sure that we understand the mechanics of it. Let's, let's make sure that we understand this, what is going on behind this problem and we'll do so we'll do so by doing a simpler version of this problem let's start out with something simpler let's see what uh, what happens and then we'll do the problem that, that that is in the book okay instead of 30 instead of 30 decimals let's say only six all right and instead of having a complication of one third and two third let's make it half and half let's make it half and half so in our simpler version Half of them will have even decimal, play, uh, even tenth, tenth digit, and the other half will have the tenth digit, odd, uh, odd tenth digit. Question is, other than that, the question is the same. And and to make it simple, to make it simpler yet, we will have, we will actually have the six values here. Here are the six values. Six values are 74.32, 3.79, 4.5. One thousand thirty-two point two five, let's do it to the bottom here, one thousand thirty-two point two five, thirteen point nine seven, and twenty-four point four zero. Let's see what happens, okay? We're going to pick up speed now. So, here, the tenth digit is odd. When it is odd, we have to round it down. So 74.32 will simply become 74. 3.79, again, it is odd. When it is odd, we have to round it down. So it becomes 3. 1.27, that's an even. We have to round it up. It becomes 2. So this is the estimated value. Let's add them up. We get 4 plus 3 is 7. 7 plus 2 is 9. We get 79 of these three. Now let's add them up. This is the real value. This is the actual value, the S. This is the S. Let's add them up. I see 2 and I see 7. 7 plus 2 is 9. 9 plus 9 is 18. That's 8. Carry 1. 
And when we carry 1, we get 3 plus 7 is 10, plus 1 is 11, plus 2 is 13. Carry 1. Carry 1, we get a 4 plus 4 is 8, plus 1 is going to be 9. So it turns out that 79.38, the actual value, is rounded to 79. So far, so good. Let's do these three now. Let's do these three. Again, the tenth digit, the tenth digit is even. When tenth digit is even, we are supposed to round it up. So it's going to become 1033. When the tenth digit is odd, when the tenth digit is odd, we're supposed to round it down. So it's just going to become 13. Again, the tenth digit is. Oh, the, that's not the tenth digit. I'm pointing to the wrong thing. I'm pointing to the wrong thing. I'm not paying attention. 13 point. I hope I didn't do it over there. 13.97. The tenth digit is right here. The tenth digit is odd. Since the tenth digit is odd, it's going to be rounded down. It didn't do any harm to us because they both happen to be odd by, by chance. 24.2 point 24 point point 24 point point 24 point four. That's a, that's an e that's an even tenth digit. If it's even, we have to round it up, so it's 25. Let's add them up very quickly. 3 plus 3 is 6, so we get 11, carry 1. 3 plus 3 is 6 plus 7, 1071. Again, this is the estimated value, and let's add up this 79 here. And we get 0, 5, 14, 5. We get 1000, 100, and 1000. 0, 0, I have, I have a mistake in my notes here, 9, where did this 1 come from, 3 plus 3, 3 plus 3 is 6, 6 plus, this is, this is 24.4, it is even, if it's even, we have to round it up, so it becomes 25, anyway, we end up with 11 point, uh, 0, carry 1, 14, 15, 1, that's right, that's correct. Now let's add up these numbers. Let's add up these numbers. 2, carry 1, we get 12, we carry 1. 1 plus 9 is 10, 10 plus uh, 2 is 12, plus 4, 16. Carry 1, we get 3, 1 plus 2 is 3, 3 plus 3 is 6, 6 plus 4 is 10. 0, carry 1. 3 plus 3 is 6, 6 plus 1 is 7. I must have made a mistake somewhere. Oh, there you go. So that's what I get there. Let's add up this number here, 79.38. 79.38. This comes from here. We get 0, carry 1, we get 0 again, carry 1, we get a 0 again, carry 1, we get a 5, and 1, and 1. So, what is the answer to this problem? Answer to this problem, what is E minus S? It's just a chance, it's just a fluke, it's just a coincidence that here, the difference between the estimated value and the actual value, the difference between estimated value and actual value is actually a big fat zero. It turns out to be zero. That's the sort of things we have to do in the problem that is given to us. However, in the problem that appears in the book, there are certain complications. There are two or three complications. The very first complication is that Instead of six, instead of six decimals, we have to deal with thirty decimals. Another complication is that they do not give us half and half. They make it a little bit more, they make it a little bit more challenging by telling us that this is one third and two third. I shouldn't, I shouldn't use the word challenging. Actually, it's not a big deal. One third of them have even tenth digit and two third, and therefore it will imply that two third of them will have a tenth digit, even though they do not say that. Everything else stays the same. The last complication, which is the most important part that we have to understand here, is that in the problem that you see in the book, there are no numbers. We are not given any. We are not given the 30 readings. The 30 readings do not appear there. If the 30 reading appeared there, it would be a simple case of a. Uh, they wouldn't ask you. The question is asking. The question is asking. Which of the following is a possible value? Which of the following is a possible value of E minus S. If they had given us 30 values, if they had given us the 30 observations, they wouldn't have used the word possible. If we had the 30 value, we would figure out the exact value, the difference between the estimated value and the actual. 
actual value by simply adding up all the 30 numbers, the actual actual numbers, and then do, doing the rounding. Rounding is a very simple process. If the 10th digit is even, you round it up. If the 10th digit is you round it down. It's a matter, simple matter. And we simply add up all the estimated value. And then there will be no such thing as the possible value of E minus S. We will have the exact value, the difference between what we estimated the sum of the, sum of the 30 numbers to be and what the sum actually is. There will be no such thing as what is the, what's the possible value here. Because of the fact that we do not have the 30 observation, hence the use of the word possible. Why possible? Because there are infinite possibilities. Okay, we are, we are about to start the process, so keep listening. There are infinite possibilities. There are infinite possibilities for 30 numbers. So then how, do we, how are we going to go about finding out which of the four, three values that they give us are the possible values? Oh, when we see something like this, whenever, whenever, whenever we run in a scenario like this, when there are infinite different scenarios, inf infinite different possibilities, and they're giving it three values there, what they're telling you in a very subtle way, they're telling you what, what they're telling you in a very, uh, very subdued way, very indirect way, is that they simply want us to find out, listen very carefully, they simply want, to find, want us to find out the maximum possible value, and listen carefully, we simply have to find out the maximum possible value of this difference between the estimated value of the 30 numbers and the actual value, the maximum possible value of this difference, and the minimum possible value of this difference. Once we find out the maximum and minimum, one of those three numbers will fall outside the range. And if it falls outside the range, that's, that's not possible. Everything else is possible. There are infinite possibility between those two extremes, between the minimum possible values of this difference and the maximum possible values. Enough of the talk. Let's do the problem. Just give me one brief second before I get into this thing. So let's begin. Now remember, we are told that a third of them have even 10th digit. If third of them have even 10th digit, third of 30 is 10. 10 of them have even 10th digit, and 20 of them will have our 10th digit. Remember that. So let's first take care of the even digits, okay? Even 10th digit. And those will be 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2. Let's look at different scenarios. Okay, listen carefully here. These are the different scenarios. Here's the real values here is the actual value r stands for r stands for the real uh, not real rather r stands for the r stands for the rounded value and a stands for the actual value so if the actual value happens to be if the actual health value happens to be 0 0.2 or 0 0.4 or 0 0.6 or 0 0.8, we're looking at a very simple scenario. We're not interested in the infinite possibilities. We're looking for the two extreme, the lowest and the, and, 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 and the highest. Okay? If that's the case, then the rounded value, if the if the tenth digit, this is these are the tenth digit, these are the these are the even tenth digit. If the, if it happens to be 0 0.2, we're supposed to round it to one. So this is the rounded value. If it happens to be, if the tenth digit happens to be 0.4, it it's going to be rounded to 1 and 1 and 1. It is only the tenth digit that matters here. It is only the tenth digit that matters. Why? Because look, look, for example, if we have 87.4, we're going to round it to 88. We're going to round it to 88. And 88 is simply 87 plus 1, and this is 87 plus 0.4. So these cancel out each other. The difference is, is this 1 minus the 0.4. We round this number to 88. In reality it is 87, 87 point, point In reality it is 87.4. We round it to 88. We are, we are off by 0.6, which is what we show here. 1 minus 0.4. We are going to be off by 0.6. We're going to be off by 0 0.8, 0 0.4, 0 0.2. And there are 10 such numbers. So what we're looking at here. What we're looking at here are different scenarios. Scenario, let's call them A, B, C, D. Here, we are saying that we are looking at a scenario where we have 10 such number, where 10th digit of all of those 10 numbers, every single one of them happens to be 0.2. Every single one of them. We have 10 of them, and we are assuming a scenario where all of the 10 numbers have the 10th digit of 0.2. If that's the case, there are 10 of them, 
there are 10 of them in all the case. So here, the, the difference between the rounded value and the actual value is going to be 1 minus 0.2 times 10, 1 minus 0.2 is 8, 0.8 times 10 is 8. This is going to be 6, this is going to be 4, this is going to be 2. Now let's do the even one, Let, let's do the odd ones. Again, here are the different scenarios. Let's call them, to, to keep them separate from A, B, C, D, let's keep the R1 separate by calling them P, Q, R, S, and T. In R1, we'll have five scenarios. We'll have five scenarios because it begins with point one. It begins with point one, then goes to point three, point five, point seven, and point nine. Now the question is, if something that has a tenth, tenth digit of point one, if we have a number where the tenth digit happens to be point one, say for example, uh, point one seven, point one seven is going to be rounded to, it's going to be rounded to zero. It's going to be rounded to zero. They are all going to be rounded to zero because we have to round them down. And now we take their difference. So this is the difference between the rounded value minus the actual value. The rounded value minus the actual value. And how many are there? There are 20 of them. So here we took in scenario P, in scenario P, we're looking at a situation where we have 20, all 20 of those numbers, all 20 of those decimal, where the tenth digit happens to be odd, they are, all of them are such that the tenth digit happens to be 0.1. And there are 20 of them. So it's 0 minus 0 0.1, that's 0 0.9. 0 minus 0.1 is going to be a negative 0.1 rather, negative 0.1 times 20. Negative 0.1 times 20, negative point, point 0.1 times 10 would have been 1, so negative point 0.1 times 20 is going to be negative 2. It's going to be negative 2. Here, 0 minus, 0 minus 0.3, 0 minus 0.3 times 20, 0.3 times 10 would have been 3, 0.3 times 20 is going to be 6. This is going to be 0 minus 0.5. Is 0 0.5, 0 0.5 times 10 is 5, 0 0.5 times 20 is going to be 10, negative 10. This is going to be negative 14. And finally, this is going to be negative 18. We are almost there. We are almost there. Now we ask ourselves the extreme situations. Okay, Let's, where can I do it? Let's do it on the top because I don't want to raise any of this thing. Let's do it on the top. Let's do it on the top. We are almost done. Question is, what's the maximum, maximum possible, possible value? Maximum possible value of this guy right here. Estimated value minus the actual value. What's the maximum? Well, if you want it to be maximum, how do we make the maximum? How do we make the maximum given the fact that all of these numbers are negative? All of these numbers are negative. They are, they are all negative. So if you want the maximum, we take the highest number from here, the highest number from here is 8, and we combine it with the lowest negative number that we can find, which is going to be this guy right here. So the maximum possible, maximum possible value, when does this happen? Maximum possible value happens under, under scenario, under scenarios A and P, A and P, which is going to give us 8, plus this guy right here, negative 2. This is the maximum. Positive 6 is the maximum possible value of these 30 decimal, and that's going to happen when we have 10 decimals such that the tenth digit of all of them is 0.2, and we have 20 more decimals where the tenth digit of 20, all of those 20 decimals happens to be 0.1. In that case, their, 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 their difference is going to be maximum, and that maximum is going to be 6. Assuming, ass, assuming we're talking about the simplest world here, where it's just one tenth digit, that's it. It's not, we're not, we, we, are, we are taking out, in reality what it is, is, one more time, let me explain to you. In reality, in reality, we are, we are assuming, we are assuming that if we have something with a tenth digit of 0.2, let me, right here, for example, if we have something with a tenth digit of 0.2, then it's just 0.2, that's what we are assuming. In reality, it could be, it could be 107.27. 107, 107, 100 and, I said 107, but I wrote down 
it, it could be 107.27. Now this is since this is this is even, it's going to be rounded to 108, and so on and so forth. There are infinite different possibilities, but we don't have to worry about all of those things because there are only three choices that are given to us. And the three choices, well, this is what I'm trying to make you understand, the three choices that are presented to us are of such nature that we are only, we only have to look at the simplest possible scenario, which is just 0.2, that's it, or 0.7. Now, if you want my opinion, and this is just my opinion, and many people disagree with me, in my opinion, this is not a very, very well written question. This question stinks to high heaven, in my in my opinion. I shouldn't have to explain this much for a question like this, you know, for for a question, for any question in the exam. This is not a well-written question, in my opinion. Anyway, enough said. So that's the maximum value. Similarly, we find the min minimum possible value. We find the minimum possible value. We're going to do it here. We're going to, I'm going to minimum possible value. Minimum possible value of E minus S is how much? But well, that's going to be under under scenarios. Now, if you want minimum, if you want minimum, well, how do we find the minimum? We, we, we take the lowest positive number. We take the lowest positive number. Let me do it in a different color. We take the lowest pos uh, positive number, which is right here, 2, and we combine and we take away the highest negative number, highest negative number is in negative with the large, largest number, which is this guy right here. If you combine these two, we end up with 2 minus 18. We end up with scenario scenario D and scenario T. Under scenario, scenario D and scenario T. And we end up with positive 2. We end up with positive 2 plus a negative 18 and that gives us negative 16 that's the minimum possible value that's it we're done as a matter of fact we were done long time ago we were done long time ago in the sense that once we found out well technically we were not done because we still have to do this part but what I was trying to make you understand is that once we figure out that the maximum possible value of this in this scenario in these two in these two scenarios in this problem is positive 6 then positive 8 is one of the answer choices that they give us positive 8 is ruled out so that's it it's negative 16 and positive 6 negative 16 and positive 6 where can we put the answer choices the answer is B which is 1 and 2 because 3 says because 3 says positive 10 and positive 10 is not possible, we just found out positive, positive 10 is not possible, the highest we can go is positive 6. The highest we can go is positive 6 because this is when for the sum of the, for the, for the decimal, sum of the decimals with the even 10 digit, the sum of the decimals of even 10 digits, the highest, highest possible sum is going to be 8, and from that we take away negative 2, which is the sum of the 20 decimals with the negative 10 digit, which is negative 2. So the highest we can have is 6. Let's do the next one, shall we? I want to get hot, get the hell out of these questions because I don't like it. Let's do the next one, shall we? Just give me one quick break, or one quick uh, second for a break. Next one. Problem number 219. Problem number 219, um, I was debating back and forth. I was debating back and forth whether or not I want to do it here. Listen, I'm not going to do it here. The, I would like you to watch, watch, just type in math problems, math problems, day 48. Just type in this tag, math problems, day 48, nothing with it. Don't type in GMAT, GRE, nothing in it. Just type in math problem, day 48. If you have trouble finding that video with this tag, type in also my name, Kishwani, and watch that video. Also watch day 47, day 47, and in those two videos, you will find the solution to this problem. As a matter of fact, solution to this problem is 48. If, 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 if you have trouble finding it like this, then here's another tag that you can use. Look for, look for prime factors, prime factors, part 2 or 2. Part 2 of 2, 
and of course it does not hurt. If I were you, if I were you, I would watch, I would watch part one of two first, understand what's going on, the concept of prime factors, and then try to do the problem yourself. And then if you still have trouble doing the problem yourself, then you can watch part two of two, where I actually show you the solution to this problem, problem number 219, the exact same problem, problem number 219. Just type in prime factors, part two of two. Or you can type in math problems, day 48. Okay, and you will find the solution to 219. I'll see you tomorrow. I'll see you tomorrow where we'll begin the problems on the next page. Okay? Bye now.